Now that we have a better idea of what differential equations are, let's start to look at their solutions. And for now, I'm going to look at explicit solutions. The idea of an explicit solution is I actually have a function that I'm claiming is a solution. So I have this function phi of x. I'm going to assume x is my independent variable and y is my dependent variable. So I'm going to take this function and I'm going to substitute it into the equation and see what happens. In order to be an explicit solution, it needs to be able to satisfy the equation for all the x in some given interval i. So let's look at some examples of verifying explicit solutions. Here's my first example. My differential equation is the second derivative of y minus 2 over x squared y equal to 0. And I want to check this solution. I want to check if the function x squared minus x to the negative 1 is a solution. So the first thing to notice in this equation is I need the second derivative of y. So I need to find the second derivative of phi. We start with the first derivative. Just as a reminder, when we take derivatives, we bring the exponent down and subtract 1. We then need the second derivative. Once again, bringing the exponents down and subtracting 1. So now we're going to substitute that into our equation. The equation says the second derivative, which we just found. It then has a minus 2 over x squared times y, which is phi of x. And we want this to be equal to 0. So now we just need to simplify and see if this is a true solution. See if we actually get something accurate here. So let's start by distributing our parentheses. Negative 2 over x squared times x squared is just going to be negative 2. And negative 2 over x squared times negative x to the negative 1 is plus 2x to the negative 3. And now we can see that this left side does simplify to be 0. So I do get a true solution. So this does satisfy on the interval of x not equal to 0, since x equal to 0 would give me an undefined answer here, since I would have zeros on the bottom of a fraction. Let's look at a couple more. This time I have the same differential equation I had before, but my solution that I want to check is just a psi of x equal to x cubed. So once again, I need to start by finding the second derivative since I need the second derivative for my differential equation. We see the first derivative, I bring the exponent of 3 down and subtract 1 to get 3x squared. And then the second derivative, I bring the 2 down and subtract 1 to get 6x. I then need to stick this into my equation, which starts with the second derivative. I then do minus 2 over x squared times y, which is this function psi of x. And I want this to be equal to 0. So let's start by simplifying that 2 over x squared times x cubed. And for that, I get 6x minus 2x equal to 0. We then subtract on the left to get 4x, which is not a true statement. 4x is not always equal to 0. So this would not be an explicit solution. Let's do one more. Here, my differential equation says second derivative of y minus the first derivative of y minus 2y equal to 0. And my function that I want to check to be a solution, c1 e to the negative x plus c2 e to the 2x, where c1 and c2 are constants. My differential equation requires the second derivative, so let's find the second derivative of this function. We can see the first derivative is negative c1 e to the minus x plus 2c2 e to the 2x. The second derivative would then be c1 e to the negative x plus 4 c2 e to the 2x. So let's substitute this in. The differential equation starts with the second derivative. It then says minus y prime, so minus the first derivative. And then finally minus 2y, so minus 2 times this original function. And this should be equal to 0. Let's start by distributing my parentheses. So now that I've distributed my parentheses, there's still a lot going on here. So let's start to group things by e to the negative x and e to the 2x. And now that we've done that, we can see these parentheses both go to 0. So we do end up with 0 equal to 0. So yes, this is a solution.